It's safe to say that during the era of the N64, it was often a struggle for developers to have a game with grand ambitions to eventually deliver the final finished game as they had promised. Clever studios often refrain from giving away too many promises when announcing games, for the obvious reason that they would be held accountable if the final game delivered anything less. So perhaps someone should have given the same gem of advice to the Climax group, as in 1998 they announced Battlezone Rise of the Black Dogs for Nintendo 64, which was to be published by Crave Entertainment. After landing on store shelves in North America in the year 2000, you may have been forgiven for thinking that this has more in common with the 1980s arcade machine than its PC counterpart which arrived a few years previously. You see, when announcing the game it was stated that Battlezone would be a perfect blend of 3D action pack sequences and a deep real-time strategy engine. Boldly stating that the game would have dozens of vehicles and weapons, as well as the game spanning across the entire galaxy. There would be three unique and in-depth storylines in the game dependent on which faction you chose, and even an arcade mode for some purely arcade action pack missions. Knowing that the game would take place in space and contain mech-like battles, I was instantly anticipating this title. But thankfully it never made its way to the PAL region, and after the absolute hammering it took on import reviews, it quickly became apparent that the rest of the world had dodged one of the poorest games of the year. The game takes place in an alternative history, where during the Cold War the Americans have set up a base on the dark side of the moon. The Russians have discovered a biometal in space and intended to use it to build vehicles with an immense level of power. And then you also have the Black Dogs. Well they just seem to have been thrown into the game for no apparent reason other than being a rogue group of mercenaries. After choosing your faction you begin a set of missions taking place across many planets where the stories of the different factions form parallel series of events to one another. If you play as the Americans for example, you'll have to find artefacts to help you stop the Russians building their super weapons. As the Russians, you'll need to steal from the Americans in order to advance your own agenda. After some tit for tat missions where you're essentially trying to stop one another, the previous hours of gameplay turn into a complete nonsense mess as the Americans and Russians team up to battle a common enemy. All the meanwhile the Black Dogs are seemingly there in the game to just do their own thing and they have very little relevance or requirement to even be in the game at all. When starting the game you have three game modes which are Arcade, Pilot and Commander and whilst the names will interest you the core gameplay pretty much boils down to driving your tank to a set of destinations, taking down enemy buildings and craft and trying not to get blown up along the way. Anyone hoping for a Rogue Squadron like experience in Battlezone will sadly be let down. Instead of nimble movements and quick reactions, the tanks themselves plod along at a snail's pace, which isn't helped by the fact that the game's frame rate is so low. You'll rarely get any sense of speed whatsoever when playing, and instead of being fixed on the main screen, you'll likely spend more time looking at the radar in the corner as your only way to navigate to your objectives. This is because, quite honestly, Battlezone has some of the worst fog in any Nintendo 64 game I've ever seen. You can barely see more than a few feet in front of you. Sure the developers would have you believe this is space dust or some atmospheric visual effect, but in all honesty it makes the game nearly unplayable. For this reason the arcade mode is pretty much the only playable mode in the game. It's stripped down, basic and just about does the job. You enter your tank, take down all enemies on the map and have various weapons and power ups to collect on your path of destruction. Then it's on to the next level, you repeat the same thing all over again and eventually complete the mode. The mission based pilot mode is essentially the same as the arcade mode but this time you have objectives which you'll need to complete. Basically this involves going to a certain point on the map, blowing up a building and supporting enemies in retreat. There are occasional escort missions thrown in but if you played video games long enough you'll know that escort missions are often the most boring objective type. Commander mode should have been the game's shining glory, being the real-time strategy element of the game. Anyone hoping for a Command and Conquer or even a Starcraft type affair will want to avoid this one. The controls are an absolute mess, and even the most basic commands and orders are difficult to achieve. You'll need a lot of patience and practice because resource management is key, 
and when you fail a mission for the umpteenth time because you ran out of supplies, you'll quickly lose interest in progressing any further. There is also a multiplayer mode in the game, well if that's what you can call it. There are three modes in the multiplayer mode, which are deathmatch, racing and strategy. The names are pretty much self-explanatory, but all that you need to know is that you should avoid it like the plague. They're all poorly executed, not at all fun to play, and there are various other games on the console which do everything in a much better way. You may be looking at the footage here and thinking that this was an early N64 title, but sadly it isn't. An N64 game released in the year 2000, this is about as ugly as you could get. The textures are a blocky and murky mess, and the planets which you visit are some of the blandest and most boring environments you could possibly imagine. I saw how many people went crazy over No Man's Sky, just imagine if this game was released today. There are some minor highlights in the visuals however. The crafts themselves are terribly low res, but they are actually interesting to look at, and the different cockpit views do spice up the look of the game somewhat. You'll get occasional treats like decent looking explosions or trails from your weapons, but these are used far too sparingly. My biggest shock at the game was not in its terrible visuals, but instead on the music in the game. The music is so bad it almost becomes good. The compositions themselves are quite interesting, in a sense that they give you an instant sci-fi feel, but they sound as if they could have easily come from a Super Nintendo game. Actually that's not doing the Super Nintendo justice, because in Battlezone you'll hear crackly music pop and loop so frequently that it does become distracting. When first playing the game I actually thought I'd blown my speakers because the music was so distorted. Then out of nowhere came some quite clear sounding voice acting and I started to wonder what the hell had happened. It's almost as if the audio effects and the music department never spoke to one another during the game's development and just bundled everything together on deadline day. Battlezone Rise of the Black Dogs is surely a game which nobody could love. I tried my best to see past the poor visuals, convoluted storyline and even shielded my ears from the wretched music. But with so many ideas, none of which were fully fleshed out, it ended up being a game which had grand and noble ambitions, but suddenly turned out as a hash of unfinished and ill-conceived ideas. It's so frustrating because the ideas themselves are really good, and if they'd just taken one of them and focused an entire game around that, then this really could have worked. But alas, Battlezone Rise of the Black Dogs sold poorly, was trashed by critics, and has become one of the N64 titles you never really hear about for a very good reason. And so for today's topic of conversation, I'd love to know the time when you played a game which tried to pack in so many different features that you felt it took away from the overall main gameplay experience. I'd also love to know if you did actually pick up Battlezone back in the day, be it on PC or this N64 version, and what your expectations and eventual thoughts were. Let me know in the comments section down below and until next time.